Welcome back to the New Features video series for Cubase. In this chapter, we'll explain how to use the new loudness metering functions. The real purpose of this chapter is to explain how to use the new R128 loudness meter and the associated loudness statistics. But to do that, we need to back up and have a brief conversation about loudness in general. Now, there's a natural tendency to make things louder because the human mind perceives louder as better. But you can only go so far before you exceed the limitations of the technology, be that tape, broadcast spectrum, or digital components. Therefore, our industry has historically focused on measuring and controlling, or normalizing, to peak levels to protect equipment or stay within the regs. But the human ear and brain don't perceive peak levels. They perceive average levels, or loudness. Here's an example of what I mean. Listen to the following example. I'll let these two tones cycle a few times, and you try to pick out which one is louder. You'll have to listen very closely because they should sound nearly identical. Listen again. Seems like they're very close to the same volume, right? Wrong. The second example is actually about 15 decibels louder than the first. Listen again, but this time watch the meters. Your eyes can sure tell which one's louder using a meter, but they have nearly the same perceived loudness. That's because the first example is at about 1500 hertz. That's a frequency range the human ear is very good at hearing. The second example is down at 100 hertz, a frequency range we are not good at hearing. As a result, the second tone has to be nearly 15 dB louder before we perceive it as the same. The point here is that human hearing is subjective, so even though broadcasters have traditionally normalized everything to the same peak levels, that did little to impact the average or perceived loudness. This is what brings about the familiar problem of TV commercials sounding louder than the programs on either side. They say that most living rooms today have more than five remote controls in them and that the most commonly pressed button is the volume control. This fact alone means we have a problem. In a sense, the end user had to apply their own loudness normalization by way of their remote control. To help fix this, broadcasters around the world are adopting a new standard called the R128 loudness standard, and Cubase is right there. R128 moves us away from normalizing the peak volume to normalizing the average loudness. As the industry moved from focusing on volume to focusing on loudness, it needed a new standard of measurement. Well, actually, it needed two standards, a relative standard of measurement and an absolute standard of measurement. These are the LU and LUFS, respectively. LU stands for loudness unit, and one loudness unit is the same as one dB. So you might say that this program is two LU louder than that program, but that its average loudness is minus 12 LUFS. Having said that, peaks are still important too for electrical reasons. So you could say that as an engineer, you need to look after loudness on behalf of the listener and peaks on behalf of the equipment. To accommodate this, the R128 standard establishes three parameters which characterize the audio program. The first parameter is the average or integrated loudness. A program's integrated loudness is a single number which describes the average loudness from start to stop. It doesn't matter if the program is a 10 second commercial or a 70 minute symphony. The integrated loudness is the value that broadcasters use to normalize their output from one program to the next. And widespread use of integrated loudness normalization is what will one day allow us all to put down the remote control. The second parameter is true peak level, which is self-explanatory. The requirement to monitor true peak level exists primarily to protect broadcast equipment and ensure adequate headroom. 
The third parameter is loudness range, which is the difference between the average soft levels and average loud levels in a program. In the world of peak normalization, 0 dB was the magic number, because any signal level above 0 would clip. In the new world of loudness normalization, R128 gives us a new magic number, which is minus 23 LUFS. Cubase 8's new built-in loudness meter is fully compliant with EBU R128. In the main meter area, you can see the momentary loudness represented by the central bar. This updates about every 400 milliseconds. Then you have two triangles which float up and down. The gray triangle shows the short-term loudness, which is updated every three seconds. And the other triangle shows you the integrated or average loudness over the life of the program. You also have the option to display this value in LU or LUFS, relative or absolute. In LU, the integrated average triangle is green below zero and red at zero. In LUFS, the integrated indicator switches to red above the new magic number of minus 23. If I reduce the master fader, you'll see the green integrated value gradually begin to settle. The longer I let the program play at the lower volume, the further it settles. The EBU R128 standard does not specify a limit on LU range, but only asks that you consider the LU range when mixing. However, R128 does specify a hard limit for true peaks, which is minus one dB. Consequently, any signal above minus one dB will cause the true peak number to illuminate in red. If I increase the volume very carefully here, you'll be able to see when that change in color occurs. To help keep this all sorted out, Cubase offers a variety of loudness range display options in the settings menu. This menu lets you configure when the clip or warning light illuminates. And now that we understand the R128 standard a little better, you can see why the values are set at minus 0.9 for true peak and at minus 22 for integrated. And of course, short-term clip is set at 0 dB full scale, more or less where it's always been. Cubase 7 also has an advanced peak warning algorithm to help ensure accurate clip indications. And you can see the numeric values for all of this reading out below the meter area. Now let's switch back to the main meter. You can see we have several display options for scales. Let's look at the EBU scale in detail. This meter is also designed to provide you with the same three sets of information. And again, those are momentary, short-term, and integrated levels. Momentary is shown by the fine blue line and it looks back 400 milliseconds. The gray line is your maximum peak indicator. The yellow band represents the short-term level of the last three seconds. And finally, you have the integrated levels shown in green. And again, consistent with R128, this is the average volume of the entire program from start to stop. You've probably noticed that the integrated, or average levels, always seem to trend below the short-term levels. But you'd think over time, especially on a loop like this, that the average loudness would catch up to and become equal to the short-term loudness. But the integrated loudness calculation incorporates a gate function that is not shown anywhere. Now, the mathematics involved are beyond the scope of this video, but in a nutshell, this gate makes the meter ignore quieter material. The purpose of this is to keep long periods of silence, like long passages of soft dialogue in a movie, from throwing off the average loudness value of the track as a whole, which would cause louder parts like chase sequences to become over-exaggerated. The best part about mixing music with a loudness meter is that what you see will finally match what you hear. Speaking of mixing, let's move on to the next chapter and take a look at some of the new downmixing capabilities in Cubase.